Hey everybody, we're trying to do another sound check again, so let me know if you can hear me. Hi there, can you, can you hear me okay? Hey Jess, let me know if you can hear me. I'm doing a sound check. Hi everybody. You can hear now? Good. Hi. Good, 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 good. I think I did something right today, right? Well, we may as well stay on here and wait for everybody else to come in. How was everyone's Thanksgiving? That's what I want to know. I ate too much. I'm still eating too much. You need to look at your questions here, and your comments. I'm gonna give it a few minutes. I have my cards, we're ready to go. I'm semi-tuned in. We'll see what happens here. Hi, Dave, Gail, Lisa, Ann, Tammy, Jess. Hi. I'm going to invite a few friends here. Hold on just a second. Okay, good show. When everyone is here, then we're gonna go, hi everybody, hi, hi, hi. When everybody is here, we're gonna then, I'll go over a little bit, a few guidelines and then we'll get started. Jess and Amber. Got my cards. I have my trusty little pendulum and I have to untangle him. So he's here. And then I have something else tonight we've not done before. These are rods. I don't know if you can see them. You can kind of sort of see them. And they answer yes and no questions. There, it's nothing special, it's just basically an old coat hanger. So you can see, and I'm gonna try to position my hands that uh, we'll do a little demonstration here while we're waiting on everybody. If you can show me your no answer, no should be a part. Wait, this is backwards, so I have to. I have to account for that. All right. This is, no. Okay, the rods need to show me the yes answer. Ooh. Okay, that's yes. So we'll use those two. Let me adjust my camera a little bit. It's kind of throwing me off. I don't need to be thrown off right now. Hold on. That's a little bit. See if everybody, oh, we've got another couple of minutes yet. So tell me, everybody, how was your Thanksgiving? And I'm going to start shuffling the cards. And incidentally, if you ever go to a card reader, and I'm watching the comments, sorry. I'm not distracted. I just want to make sure I see what you say. But if you ever go to a card reader and they do a dovetail, oh, that's a good card that I just pulled up. That is, well, see, it's backwards for me, okay? 
So this is the Ten of Hearts. This denotes a new beginning. This is a great card to pull. So the fact that I did that in a shuffle, plus it's a Three of Hearts in a cut, and that denotes partnerships, love, that sort of thing. So we're on a good track right now. But anyway, if you ever go to a card reader, and they shuffle other any other way than this, if they do that split, and the dovetail thing like this, if you go to a casino or if you do any of those things, they're never going to get a good reading. Never. And it's because you, you're you just, you know, that sound or you never do that thing where you, you know, you makes that sound. <laughs> you know, um, never do that if you're a card reader because it just, the energies just fly right off of these. So I'm going to hold on to my cards so we get some good readings for everyone. And then it's 7 p.m., so we'll wait for some other people to come in. I'm not seeing comments here. Maybe it's because I have a scroll. Hi, Luann. Hi, Jennifer. Great. Too much. Finish the pot. Yes. Okay, Amber. Thank you so much. Hello and hello, Paula. Hi. Hi, Teresa. Lisa. Hi. Jess. I'm super excited, too. Tammy. Good. Good. Happy you're all here. Hi, Sean. Glad you're here. Oh, Paula, you've used dowsing rods. Good, good, good. Um, Jess, yours was quiet. My my Thanksgiving was quiet. It was me, my son, and a friend of ours, and we just really did nothing. I didn't even check my emails. Nothing. Literally. I watched Ghost Adventures. Okay. <clears throat> Amber, mine. Oh, Snowy Jennifer. Okay. Hi, Meg. You're in the UK. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Hope you all had a good one. We did. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming in from the UK. This is exciting. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm moving this. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, you do have Tammy. I have friends and my boss. Um, I do have another job other than this life. And uh, my boss is in Canada, and you are right. Uh, they do have Thanksgiving. You do have that Thanksgiving in October. So that's good. So hi, Dodie. How are you? Good to see you. Everybody's good. Okay, good. We've got a couple of more participants that we need to wait on, I think, for a minute or two. Peter, we're waiting on, and... Um, let me see what Jess is saying. I'm sorry, this is flipped backwards. So it's a little hard for me to kind of like, I was going to watch the new Ghost Adventures, but accidentally deleted it. I hit the wrong button. Oh, no. I watched the Ghost Adventures. Pardon me, I have to get comfortable. <laughs> I watched the one that was, and it was really, really scary about the graveyard in the Pacific series, they ran into a few demons. It's frightening. To see, to see Zach say, I'm scared, you know, it was bad. Because sometimes he doesn't get scared. He should. He should. I wish I could get rid of this glare, and I can't. Let me see. I might be able to do it a little bit like that. I'm turning down the... It doesn't help. Okay. Well, we'll try. Peter is here. Good. Good, good. Jess, yes, it was scary. We have one more participant. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Sorry. Got that little... I'm like bewitched. I move my nose. Um... I'm really well. Thank you so much. 
I seen that one, yeah. I love Zach too. Zach, if you want to know what Zach is, Zach is a sensitive. Um, Zach is really, really honed his ability and his gift and his craft. He has really honed it. Um, I can almost tell you if I were ever near Zach, which you never know, but if I were near him and I shook hands with him, I, it would probably be like a cattle prod. He's got that much energy in him. Okay, let me see. Marsha is not here yet. We need to... Yeah, Tammy, he is cute. He is cute. But, I don't know. Have you... Do you all think maybe Zach's... I'm going to have to do this because that glare drives me crazy, and I'm sorry. Um, do you think that Zach's looks have changed a little? Maybe. That comes from being in this business. I've noticed that my looks have changed over the year, other than getting older. Um, it kind of does something to you, but I don't know. Tell me what you think. We're waiting on Marsha. Okay, great. Thank you, Amber. Amber is going to, uh, we have 17 in the house. That's great. Vicki, hi. Dinky D, hi. Thank you very much for coming. I don't want to start without any of the participants. We have one more, Amber, um, that should be in. Yeah, a, a little bit. Your, your um, pardon me, your looks can and do change when you're in this line, in this industry. And um, let's see if I'm reading. I have to read the comments, guys. Okay, let me do this. So I try not to glare. His glasses do make him more distinguished. They do. <laughs> they do. Okay. Let me try to do this one. Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay. <laughs> Jessica, yeah. Yeah, Zach's got a lot of uh, energy. Definitely. Teresa, Zach's changed more of the looks. He seems darker to me. Well, he's taking chances. That concerns me for him. I, I, and then you have to be careful in this business because a lot of times the, you know, you, you get so into it and you feel like you're accomplishing things. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, been there, done that. Let's go to this level or this, let's go to this level. And it, it just gets a little scary. It's, I'm, I'm concerned for him. Not that I'm going to see him to tell him, but I'm a little concerned for him. But that's his business. He knows what he's doing. But you look older because of the energies that you use. Well, <clears throat> so much we had a hard time to replenish that's right paula um teresa yeah i yeah we can be scared with me what have changed with me are my eyes are more sunken my eyes sockets are more sunken in and my cheekbones are more defined if you saw a picture of me and it's not age but if you saw a picture of me a few years ago you could see the difference there's there's almost a oh, I need something done, don't I? There's almost a, a I can't describe it. It's a, it's a facial change, basically, is what it is. Let's see if Miss, didn't Zach get sick from an investigation? From the Conjuring House, he did. Um, yeah, Gail, he really does. Yeah, Jess. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for coming in. Um, he does like to provoke now, and uh, that's one thing I, 
I'm not comfortable doing that. Maybe a lot of other people are, but I'm not. I don't think you should do that. It, even as experienced as many of us are, um, that conjuring house now, I saw where, uh, is it Amy Bruni and Adam from Kindred Spirits now have um, actually been investigating that house. And um, I'd like to see what, I'd like to see, yeah, I'd like to see what they have. Thank you, Amber. Let me try to move my camera down here. Hi, TJ. Thanks for stepping in. Glad to see you. Okay. It's very bad, Tammy, to provoke. I'll tell you why. Because demon, demons run in gangs. If you ever think that there's one lone demon, no. They run in herds. They run in gangs. There's always a leader. And there's always the little minions that are around. Um, the little minions could be anything that has been provoked or, uh, but, but there's always a gang leader. And it's not necessarily Satan. I think sometimes when you get those words like Satan on EVPs, like Zach's group gets a lot. And I've seen other groups get it too. Omar Garsh and, and some of those guys. Bottom line is, it's not really Satan, um, but they do that to scare you, and it works. You know, they're, they're not, they don't play fair. I think a lot of people that are in the investigation business feel, um, you know, they think that they can go out and they think that they can play fair with demons and all kinds of things and that. They're here to hurt us. They're, they're, they're here to lead us down a road that we can't come back from. Um, you know, sometimes, and I know you probably know this, but um, there's a difference from being possessed and have an attachment. And a, a possession is you have a full body, they have just basically come in you and taken over. That's what requires a complete exorcism to get out. I've never seen one of those in person and I don't care to. Uh, an attachment I have seen. Um, and an attachment means that literally you wear it on you just like a backpack. You can't take it off. It's not easily to get off. A lot of times you need an exorcism to get that off too. Um, they're hard to get rid of. They can manipulate you, not so much their thoughts, but your thoughts, but through suggestions. They can manipulate other things around you um, to make you go in a particular direction. Basically, they whisper to you. And sometimes I think if you see murderers that say, oh, well, the devil told me to kill this person, nine times out of ten, I believe that. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I do. Uh, we live in an age now where these things are getting conjured up day, right and left, day and night. And it's hard because people are dabbling. They don't know. They conjure it up. They open a portal. Things come through and you can't get rid of it very easily. So you have to be careful of going out to these places like the conjuring house. Now, I'm going to tell you, you may think I'm crazy, I would like to go to the conjuring house. And if I can find a group to go with, I would go. I know when to leave. I would just like to walk in and just see. You know, I, we, I've heard other things. And I mean, after Zach, I, this family is suing um, Travel Channel and Ghost Adventures, and they said nothing has happened. And, you know, sometimes it's like the Amityville house. There's more hype to it than what there really is. Excuse me. Got to take a break. So, 
beware. You know, <clears throat> I see a lot of groups, and there's more comments. Hold on. I'm going to read. It's usually a demon. Yeah, there is no fair play. You're right, Gail. Um, okay, Jess, you can go with me. So why do people provoke? Because I don't, I think they're inexperienced. I think they sometimes go in and they think, well, I want to be that one person in that one group. I think it's immaturity in this business. A lot of people like to play games and they think that it's a game and going out and sometimes they take these EVPs seriously when it's just stuff that's mimicking whoever it is. Your, your soul leaves here. It's gone. What's left is residual energy that loops. That's what's left. Now, what comes through EVPs? Well, those are those entities that come through that mock and they mimic. They can change their voices. They can be a shapeshifter. They can basically go anywhere they like. And they're there to fool you. And a lot of inexperienced groups go out and they think, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to really provoke this guy to, uh, you know, this, this group and may, or these entities, and maybe, maybe uh, I'll be the one to get the EVP, or I'll be that special one, or I want to be like Zach, and I want to make millions. Zach has been pushed, scratched, attached. Really? You want to be like that? It's not really worth it. My idea of being in this business, in the investigative and psychic business, and yeah, there's been some people that have said, oh, well, this group is going more psychic. No. What I want you to know is, many times, you have to be prepared psychically. You're dealing with another realm. Whether you're psychic or not is one thing, but you're dealing with a completely different, that no one can control, that we really are not supposed to be messing with. And so that's why you have to be careful. And I, I, I'm here to teach you whatever it is that you want to know. And yeah, these little psychic sessions, they're fun. I mean, it's the same thing as, you know, whatever, having whatever in groups. It's the same thing. Uh, but I'm... I'm here to help you, and believe me, I've been on enough. Hey, Nick, I've been on enough. Uh, I, we used to call them hunts because we were hunting evidence. We were hunting things down. Hold on. Let me see the comments here. I'll go. All right, Teresa. No Mountain Dew today. <laughs> Luann, no, I'll tell you what. I suffered greatly with that last Mountain Dew. It took me a day, literally, to get through that because I saved some. I can't do it, sorry. It's it's back to water for me. Good old H2O. Okay, Nick is here. Just wanted to see a spirit not have anything attack me or attack. Well, I'll tell you what, stick around. You'll you'll see them. They're, they're out more than ever now. They're more prevalent in the world than they ever have been. You'll see them. You'll see them. I think sometimes people don't recognize signs of having hauntings or spirits or entities or whatever you want to call them. But um, let's see, we were waiting on a couple of people. I don't really want to wait too much longer. How about a story? Can you guys give me some hearts if you want to hear us? Uh, one of my haunt stories, a couple of them, I can tell you, and they're kind of creepy. So I'll, uh, I'm going to keep scrolling through here and hoping some of the other participants get to come in are only help me to know about the other realm. Okay, that's right. And that's what we're here for. And I'm just going to say, how many groups do you know that go out and they have a psychic or an intuitive or a medium or a sensitive go out, they do. So I guess I can just say, if it's if this is not your bag, then don't be here. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's all that's all we can do. Okay, let's have a story. 
I've got one to tell you. And of course, I know that a lot of you know that I grew up in a farm in Ohio. And I would think I was about 17 or 18. My boyfriend and I and another couple were dri driving around West Salem. West Salem, Ohio is a lot of Amish people. And I'll, it's very farm country, very farm. So we're driving up there one day because we heard of this urban legend that if you drive near this particular cornfield on this particular road that you would see following you in the cornfield this bright light. And we knew people that said, oh gosh, you know, we went up there at night and we saw it. Well, we went up there this one night and lo and behold, we saw it. And the faster we drove, the faster this light to the left of us in this cornfield was was going. I don't know, it was weird. Uh, it was not like a flashlight or anything else. It was it was a big ball of light. I don't know, probably about as big as a basketball. And it was just whipping through this cornfield. I mean, it somebody couldn't run that fast. If we speed up it would run or we'd go that fast. If we'd slow down, it would slow down. It would just really keep up with us. So we decided the next day to go back, do a little bit of research. Well, we didn't notice it that night before, but there was an old house. This old house had a tree growing in the upstairs. The windows were broken out. It's kind of creepy. So we decided to come back that night again and check out the house and not the field. We didn't see this lantern-like light that night. So we pulled into this house. When we pulled in, we saw candlelight in the house. I was creeped out. I didn't want to go in. And my boyfriend uh, was a real, I don't know, anyway, he was brave. He wanted to go in. So we all got out of the car and we saw movement and then we saw the candle burn out and it was not, or, or blow out, and it was not a windy night. Like I said, there were no windows in this house. It was not a windy night. It was during the summer. It was hot, bugs, and so we said, okay, we're going to come back the next day again. So the next day, we went back. We went back to this house, and my friend and her boyfriend were with us, and we just decided to go ahead and get out of the car and bite the bullet and go into this house. I was braver in the daylight. <laughs> so we, we get out of this house, or get out of the car, we go to go at this house, and there was a tractor that had been parked up toward the road by the driveway. Well, just as we were going around the back of the house, this little old man, and I mean, he was little, not more than five feet. I'm five foot ten, so I've always been tall, and he seemed really small to me. I was like towering over him, but he was pale white, and he had white eyes. Um, I think he was like an albino person, and and you know nothing wrong with that. But th just to give you that, he was extremely pale and white. So he was dressed in like a farmer, came in with overalls or, you know, had this little, I don't know, choo-choo cap on, looked like a little engineer. He came, and he came around that house, and he looked at me, and looked at me up and down, and he looked at my boyfriend, and he looked and he said, what do you kids want? And my boyfriend was smart, and he said, well, her dad owns a farm, down the, down the road here, and he saw a tractor, and he sent us up here to ask how much you, you wanted. And he said, oh, okay, well, that's the neighbors. If you go to the neighbors, they can tell you. I just told them that they could park it here because it was easier for them to see. Okay, great. So we get into the, we get into the um, car, and we leave. A couple of days later, my dad comes to me, and he said, hey, did you kids go up there and 
check out that tractor and did you find out anything? I was like, yeah. And he said, there's something weird going on up there. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, because I know the, I'm just going to say the last name is Kokendurfer. I know the Kirk Kokendurfers are up there and they, keep, they said that there were some police cars up there and all kinds of other things. And I told dad what was going on about that house and he said, oh, you better find out what's going on up there because you don't want to get in trouble if you went up there. So my boyfriend and I hop in the car, we go up there, and lo and behold, this little old man, I can't even hardly say it, his wife had passed away. He kept her in the basement. He did not bury her. And their son was off in the military in Europe somewhere. And they, some, some of the authorities um, called and um, they, he came home then, and this was afterward. And he got mom and buried her and put dad in a home and sold this house to the Amish. And it was six months later, we, went, we drove up there. And these Amish people fixed up that house. You would have never known. But what I'm going to say is, don't be a Zelda. If you see an abandoned house and you think something is wrong, don't go in it. You never know what you're going to find. If Can you imagine? I was 17 years old, walking in, and we went around to the back to go through the basement. Can you imagine if we would have seen her body laying in there? I think about that all the time. So, okay, then one more story, and then we're going to get started, because I'm picking up a lot of things from you guys that you want to know. And for the last two days, you little stinkers, um, I know you're, you're thinking about things that you want to know. So one more story, and then this is going to help me get tuned in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started, okay? So... Um, and by the way, I saw some of your questions. Thank you so much. And I'm going to try to get to everyone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start pulling cards, doing some things, and seeing who I connect with first. Okay? One more story. My son and I went on a ghost hunt with a group that was called Ghost Hunts USA. And they're sort of predominant. They're a group that you pay them and then they take you to a location and you do a haunt and you, you know, you go through and they give you EVP equipment and they have these spirit boxes and all kinds of, oh, <laughs> I just got touched. That was odd. Okay, hold on. Okay, we're connecting. Okay, so anyway, they, <laughs> that was something. Okay, so they get, um, they give you spirit boxes and they give you all kinds of different equipment and you go around and they give you cameras and whatever. You're not allowed to have your cell phone in there, but I took mine because you don't know what's gonna happen in these places. Uh, I turned mine off uh, because you just never know if you're gonna get if there's going to be trouble or if there's somebody hiding in a place, that's another thing. Be careful. You don't know if there's other people hiding, like in the spirit, I mean in the flesh body, hiding to do you harm when you go out to these places. So you got to be careful to kind of scope things out. But this group, um, I had never been to this place before, and it's kind of funny. Um, it is in Tennessee. It's called the Old Pittsburgh Asylum Hospital. And Zach was there. I have a picture of his um, signature. I'll post it in the group so you can see. He had he and the group had been there probably about two weeks before we were. And uh, so anyway, there were some really bad, weird things that had happened in this asylum. Um, there was a man who would basically kidnap children and people and keep them in the basement and was horrible, some of the things that, that came out. But like in the 1940s, this was an asylum, and there was a very, very tall doctor that roamed the hallways. Well, that was the first thing my son came out 
And, you know, it's kind of one of those, because I'm just going to say, when you go on those group tours like that, they pick places that don't have a lot of activity, and it's because they want to be able to control everyone. I mean, can you imagine? It would be mass hysteria if something really came out and was crazy, and you had 20 and 30 people on these uh, tours, and you couldn't control it. So anyway, they don't have a lot of um, activity in a lot of these places. So anyway, um, we were in this hallway, and it was pitch, bloody, dark. I mean, blacker than, you know, sometimes your eyes can adjust to an area or at night. I mean, you can see something. My son was across from me, probably not more than five feet. I couldn't even see him. And of course, being mom, I have to go in there and I've got my bubble around me and I'm psychically protected and prayed up. And my son is too. And of course, I'm trying to extend my bubble over to him, like my little, my little shield over to him. And, you know, he's in his mid-20s, and, and he's got some ability, and he can attract things and hear things and see things. Well, the first thing that he came out of this one room and saw this doctor, this doctor was about seven foot tall. He saw an apparition, not full body, but enough to know that this entity was standing there looking at him. And he, he turned around and said, no thanks walks back in the room and he said mom we got stuff here that are coming out and i said i know let's just not say anything to everybody else let's just go through it and maybe nothing else will happen well we were huddling in the middle of this very 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 long hallway with it was a corridor basically rooms on either side and and believe me if your imagination could go wild now was the time that it was going wild. It was crazy. Um, you could, you knew things were at other ends because you could basically see movement a little bit, even though it was so dark, you could feel, see the movement. So they got the spirit box out and they were talking to this one entity. And someone said, one of the group leaders said, would you do you want one of us to come down the end of the hall? And and I first thing I did is look and said, are you crazy? I, I mean, for crying out loud, you're gonna send somebody down there that doesn't have any experience whatsoever. That's what's going through my mind. Through this spirit box, whatever says, send Ian. Now, Ian is my son. And when we're together, I call him Buddy, so we don't, we didn't share names while we were there. It was, I just called him Buddy. And you talk about, and so right away, mom pipes up and says, he's not coming to you. And my son looked at me and he's like, you know, because I can get very strong energy wise, and then it was like immediately from the one end, I was sitting my back up against the wall, the one end there was, and I, it was this little film that sometimes comes over me, there was a woman being chased by, and this is in the spirit, in the entity, she was being chased by these dark things. Her name was Frances. And she, she was running toward us. And the look on her face was pure fear. And from the time that she was down there, you could hear them running. We had it on EVP. I wish I had it. The group had it. My son, we have a few growls and stuff that my son caught. But you could hear this running coming from the end of the hall toward us. My son looked at me and said, I, I mean, he got up to my face because we couldn't hardly see anything. And he looked at me and he's like, Mom. And, and at that point, I knew 
I don't want to say that I'm going to save the day because I certainly don't. But in a situation like that, whoever is there that can stand up better be standing up because they were about to roll over us. So I jump up and run to the other end. I got goosebumps. Jump up and run to the other end of the group. And I stood there and I said, you will not pass. You will not come to us. You must release her in the name of our Lord. And it was like, boom, you heard almost a screech halt. And that girl looked at me and she was immediately gone. And the message that I got from her was that from the 40s until that particular time, this poor thing had been chased through these halls for an indefinite period of time. Now, I don't know what else happened, but I'm going to tell you, my son kind of makes fun of me and says, oh, mom, I, you know, the, the rafters were shaking and everything else because I, I put my hands out and just sent them everything. It took me five days to recover from that because I knew I had to push them back. But I went outside. And one of the group leaders came to me and she said, I think we better have everybody leave. This is the most um, activity that we've ever had. And we shouldn't be here. And I said, I don't think that you should leave. I, I think now the dark stuff is gone. But I immediately went into another room and laid down on the bed. And I couldn't even hardly drive home. That's how much zap the energy came out of me because of that. But I'm going to tell you, that was one scary place. And I tried to look it up on their website not long ago, and they don't even go there anymore. So I don't know what happened. Anyway, that was the Zelda deal. Let's get started, everybody, okay? I love you. All right, hold on. Let me see. I am the medium. Good, Paula. I am the medium. Howdy, Joe. There's Jim. Okay. Gail, I live with someone in my own house that didn't like me. It was just a dark shadow. I mean, the lights didn't want the presence and would walk down the hallway. Ugh, yikes. Okay. I want to get started with this. Everybody is saying hello. Whoops. And I moved the camera. Everybody is saying hello and everybody. Okay. Let's just go ahead and get started. Okay. Now, someone in the group here, and when I mention this, if I get it right, I want you to click on the hearts, no one else. And if no one, if you could keep your comments now and don't comment anymore, all right? Um, uh, we're going to get started on this, and I'm going to be tuning in, and I keep getting tapped on my back. Somebody's trying to come in, and we're gonna, I'm going to try to see what that's all about because, you know, I don't believe in that, and I don't know what's going on. We'll see what happens here, okay? So um, I'm going to shuffle the cards. And I'm going to get tuned in a second. Hold on. Take a couple of breaths. Okay, somebody in the group here. Uh, let me try to describe a house. Um, the house is kind of a beige. You walk in the house, there are green walls, white trim, white trim around the doorways. Uh, you go through a living room and you come to a kitchen. Does that ring a bell for anybody at all? That's what I'm getting right now, is this house. There's something about this house, someone in this house. I know we have a delay here, so I'm going to wait a few seconds. And I'm going to start pulling some cards. If you, if that's you, please let me know. Hi, Nancy. Glad you made it. Okay. And if it's not, we're going to push that to the side. I'm getting in a lot of information, and I think I'm getting a lot of information in. Okay. Who is... Um, I saw some little, I saw some little, um, 
markers. I'm thinking, let's just move on because I've got too much of a delay that I, I don't want to wait and make everybody wait. Okay. If that is your house, there is a particular situation that you've been waiting for. All right. It's coming to you. It's not bad. A, a situation from what I'm hearing is being resolved as we speak and has been in the works since last Tuesday. I want you to wait if this is your home, if that's you, and sometimes the homes and everything in these particular situations, I'm, I keep getting tagged. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes when this information comes through, that is so you can identify with it, with it being you, okay? So, all right. That particular situation, let me see if I can get more insight. Okay, the first card, and it flipped over. That is a king card. It has to do with a male. It's a male. It's a situation with a male. All right. If you identify with this, I want you to know it's okay. Now, it's not a love romance type thing. It's it's more of a. I'm hearing job. You're worried about maybe having to sell your house. You're worried about uh, trying to make trying to make ends meet, all of this coming through. It has to do with this very dominant male. That dominant male has been holding things back a little bit. Uh, I'm talking to a female, so it's either your boyfriend or husband that's prideful, that may be holding things. So hang in there. It's resolving. Don't want to upset the apple cart, but it's going to be okay, all right? So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, i got to figure out who's tapping me, and I may not be able to. Um, because I don't want that here. All right. Peter. You had a question for me in the comments, and the answer is, what type of empath should you lean toward? I can't answer that for you, my darling. And it's only because you need to answer. I can tell you what you're not, and I think that it's not a waste of time, but I think that it's something that your energy could be uh, utilized in a different, I think that you're, you're not the healer type, you, even though you're very good at counseling. I believe your empathic ability is more on the sense of knowing. Uh, you're, you're able to help people just by knowing. So with that being said, you can forget about the clear the Claire audience, the Claire, you know, it, you're, you're going to be looking into the Claire sentient type things, okay? That's what you need to be. You need to look at the Claire sentient. And that kind of takes in everything, but you're also going to start with being able to hear and sense a few stuff. That's really what it is. It's just stuff, words, pictures, uh, like I'm getting in now. And um, so at that point, that's what I want you to do, is look into the clairsentient and into the knowing part of this. And afterward, maybe we can talk about, um, I'll try to find some information for you. Because the one thing I don't want any of you doing is going into sensory overload and reading everything and anything that you can get your hands on because some of it isn't right or it may not be right for you so easy does it okay easy does it all right um let me see now what else we're getting in all 
All right, Jennifer. Uh, I know you're in the group and we've got a delay. And you asked me a question, if you should keep on this path. You've already been diagnosed. I think that's correct. You, you're already receiving some type of treatment, but it shows that you're going to be getting going into almost, you're gonna still be receiving treatment, but you're going to kind of veer into a different path. I don't, you're going to be seeing other doctors. Now, I'm not diagnosing you, and I want to make that clear because I'm not a medical doctor and I won't even try. But you're going into what seems like it's a, it's a, it's a different pathway, a different, a different way to handle this and get this under control because that's what you need is you just need it under control. And that's going to help you. But that's the path you're going to take. So don't quit this one and go into another. You're going to almost be doing them parallel. I see parallel simultaneously. And you're going to veer off into another path. I hope that helps you. That's what I'm seeing on that. I'm not forgetting the other questions. I just want to make sure that I'm getting everybody as they're coming in. Let me pull another card and let me see what else we can do. All right, I'm going to tell you who this person is that is tapping me. And I hate to even say it. Someone lost their life by the hands of another. Okay? Um... That's the person that's tapping me. Thank you for the hearts. That's the person who's tapping me. If, if, you, if you relate to that, please put that in the chat. I need, I need you, if, if it's you, if somebody's there, um, it is a female. Um, through 37 to 42, somewhere around in there. If you relate, Put it in the chat and say yes. If not, I'm getting rid of her, okay? She doesn't belong here. I don't want to hear it, and I have not called her in. But sometimes when I open up for these things, stuff comes in, and I, I can't control it, and I don't know who it's for, all right? So if that's you, if you relate, please, my finger going right, please put it in the chat down there whatever okay please put it there I'm joking around because this doesn't feel good all right there's a new comment let me see Tim I will be with my boyfriend the rest of the time. so it's a cheesy question okay well hold off until we get this because I want to see if someone um, uh, if someone connects with this, okay, this uh, person who lost his life, like I said, I need to get rid of this. Um, Paula, is that you? It, it is that connected to you? Someone that lost your lost their life in that in that. Uh, my voice is getting shy. In that age group. Is that you? Do you connect with that? I see some hearts going up. Okay. Put it in the chat, okay? Because I can't see who's giving me the hearts because there's a little bar on the bottom that's telling me to do this or that and the other thing, and I don't I don't have the room to, to know. I don't I can't see. So can you put it there? And we're gonna move on. And I'm telling her to just hold her horses. Um, and just, that's what I'm telling her. So just please write in the chat, uh, Paula, if, if you are connected to that one. Otherwise, she's going to split. Um, all right, let's move on. Tammy, I'll, ask, I'll answer that question while I'm trying to regroup my thoughts here. And that happens, okay? This is the unfun part of this whole thing. We'll see what happens. New comment. Uh, 
call it and maybe okay all right I just want you to know that what she's yeah I'm very emotional over it because Okay, I'm listening. Okay. It was untimely. Um, all she's telling me is it was not an accident. Um, okay, if you know who she is, I believe darker hair. Um, She's been trying to tell me a name, an S and a name, and this is everything that I swore I was not going to do, because this is how it affects me. Okay, Paula, if that's you, you comment. All right, because we've got a delay. Okay, she was an emotional person. Okay, Paula, that's her. So, so that's probably why I am so emotional is because if she was emotional that's why she's been at me for two days and i've just been get out of here go 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 and uh it's because i don't want to um i don't want her hanging around if that's her all right uh just know that she's told me that she's cared and she cares She's in a good place, but she wants you. And there's one other person that needs to know that um, this was not an accident. Okay? So, there you can go. All right. So, let's move on. Tammy, you had this question. <clears throat> Let me back up for you. Tammy, will I be with my boyfriend for the rest of our lives? Sorry if this is a, it's not cheesy. Um, okay. Yes, I got to Gail. I saw that. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to call her back in. It was just a message, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna see there. I don't know. If anybody responded to the house comment and all that other stuff with the predominant male, but that keeps coming in too. Let me see here what we can do. Usually, I'm just going to tell you, I do these things in person, and it's easier for me to look at you and say, okay, you stubbed your toe this morning at 10 a.m., and but it's a little hard for me right now because I'm dealing with comments and, you know, whatever. Then it's not for me. Her passing was an accident. Okay. Okay. What you view as an accident may not. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. We're, she's going. She's going now anyway. So let's let's just move on. Okay. So here we go. Tammy wants to know if she's going to be with her boyfriend. It's not a cheesy question. Us girls need to know these things, so let's find out. And by the way, sometimes what we feel are not accidents or our accidents are not really because an accident is unexpected. I don't think that this woman, I mean, it totally threw her. It was, it was, completely blindsided that's all I, and my door just moved okay Tammy hey Nick hey Joe hi Michelle okay all right so here we go Tammy wants to know we're gonna go here it is live this poor guy <laughs> does he know the first card out of the deck 
is a ten of spades? That answer is no. But I'm also going to tell you there is free will here. And, but I'm going to also say, Tammy, some things, pardon me, some things have to change. And I think you know what they are. If they don't change, the answer is no. If they do change, I think you have a very good chance of making it through. You love him, he loves you, but there's some things that need to change. And there's been a little stubbornness there. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, there's a new comment. Ooh, I moved my thing here. New comment, let me see what these comments are. Joe. Well, Joe, be careful in watching on the way home. Okay. I want to know if my path will change, if I'm a, if my medium's ship will shift. Okay. I put my question out there. Gail, you oh oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um okay, what I want to do is because we Okay, sorry, Tammy. I'm so sorry. I don't have a tissue. This is horrible. I didn't know I was going to get emotional. Just give me a second. I have a tissue here, and I need to, so I'm not sniffing and carrying on, okay? Hold on, and I'm going to just be right, be right back. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I know you guys, and I can just be myself, right? Okay. Tammy, good show, girl. I think you'll be okay. I do, all right? What I would like to do is save some of these questions for the participants that we drew. So if, if one of the participants, if Paula was one, I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer her question first. And um, let's see. Paula, you were asking, is your medium ship going to shift? I don't know really what you mean about shifting, but I think it's going to change a little bit. I think you're going to get into a position where you're going to be saying something isn't working for you, or it's not enough, or you need a little bit more time, education, something like that. You're doing good, but be cautious about calling in entities, people, or really not supposed to be doing that. If they come in, you can't help it, <clears throat> pardon me. But uh, I, th I think when you say shift, I think you mean is it going to go into a kind of a different arena? And the answer is yes, it will be. Okay? So, good girl. All right. Teresa, I'm 56 years old. Am I ever going to find someone to spend my last years with? Should I plan on being by myself? Gail, you're welcome, Tammy. Okay, first of all, Gail, I'm. thank you for putting that back in there for me. Will I ever find my one true love? The answer is yes, when you're not looking for him. Okay, that answer, uh, and I'm going to say this. He is going to come into you as a friend only. He is lonely. He is doesn't trust anyone. Kind of scared. He's got grown kids, and he doesn't want to be um, tied up again. He had a really really bad experience in a relationship. I think what I would do is just really go about your own business. And for you ladies who are wanting to bring in your and feel it's your last hurrah, I don't, I don't look at it as your last hurrah. I think that you should always be open to love, not open loving, you know what I mean. Don't put yourself out there a lot, but I mean, be, have your heart open uh, for that. Here's how to get ready for your one true love. You make room in your closet. You make room in your dresser drawers. You make room in your bed. You set another place setting at night at the table. You start 
talking as if you already have him. I'm so glad he's coming into my life. I'm so happy now that he's here. You'll know him. And I'm going to also tell you the best thing that I've done in the past. I'm alone on purpose. I don't want to be, I mean, I miss companionship to go to, you know, things and places and movies and whatever. But in my life, I can't have someone because they don't understand this. But for you, what I want you to know is that you can actually have someone again. And what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of everything you want in this man. Now, I don't want you putting down, well, I don't want him to be an alcoholic, and I don't want him to be a drug addict, and I don't want it because the universe only sees alcoholic, drug addict, abusive, Mm, don't put that stuff down. Write your list and say, I want him, he's a family man. Speak positive into him. He's a family man. He loves me. He's encouraging. He's professional. He has his own money. He has a place of his own. Uh, he has, a, you know, all these different things, okay? Stick that in your Bible. Stick that where, or stick it up, and then you just keep, thinking of it, he'll come. I guarantee it. He'll come in. He'll come in. So, Gail, you will have uh, someone. And Teresa, that's the same thing for you too, my darling. No, you should not plan on being by yourself for the rest of your life. You don't want to be, and I don't want you to be. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I have to go. Paula, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I want to just think, tell you that we think so much of you in the group. And we want to thank you so much for everything that you do and all your sweet comments. And thank you very, very much for everything. Okay? So you have a good evening. And uh, we'll talk very, very soon. Okay. Now, the other thing that's coming in, this is for Amber and Joe. There's a barn. I don't know about a haunted barn, but there is a particular barn that keeps coming up for you guys. Now, I see a move for you. It's going to be sooner than what you think. And I don't know if the barn is attached, but the barn, for some reason, is a symbol. Uh, that barn is prevalent boom so i think what it's going to be is that barn is going to be there for you as a landmark okay so you're going to know when the, when the barn starts coming in just think barn i don't know why sometimes these things come in okay now lisa 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 you had asked, will you be going forward with your hubby and your children? And the answer is yes. And I don't know why I'm thinking that there is a move out of state for you. Um, you're welcome to put down in the chat if, if that's not really right. But I don't know if you have family that's out of state or out of the area. It's, it's quite a while or ways out. If you are planning on moving there's new comments and i need to read those here really quick by paul okay tammy love you paula love you thank you so much for coming in and i thank you for this this is really an experiment every got everybody and i appreciate you being here so thank you so much um uh you're welcome uh tammy and you're welcome paula but anyway, Lisa, if you are there, if you could hit the little heart button, Lisa only, because I need to know that she's still there. I can't see. There's a change for your husband coming, and it's a very positive change, a very good change. Um, I think that, okay, good, good. I think that you are also going to go back to school from what I see. If you're not already 
if you're thinking about it, something about it. Okay, I see those hearts, good. There, there's more education for you. There's more things coming for you. Uh, your son is a real doll, and I'm gonna tell you, I see pictures and I enjoy your posts, so he's doing okay, but there's some change coming for you, and I think it's a good thing. I think that you've been, maybe or your husband have been thinking about this for quite some time, and the answer is you're gonna be able to um, make those changes. Now, I think you feel that there's a way that you can't pull this off or can't do this. And I want you to know that your husband, your husband has all these wonderful dreams and aspirations and I love him for that because he's always thinking of things that he can do. Uh, hold on a minute, I'm, I wanna make sure. I, he's always thinking of things that he can do. You're welcome, Teresa. He's always thinking of things that he can do to help his family. And he has a real entrepreneurial spirit. I love that about him. He's always thinking about, and I think sometimes you think, oh, yeah, here we go again, another, another one of these, um, another one of these uh, ideas, okay. But you know what? He comes up with some really good ideas sometimes, and I think he's a great person for you. He's a loving father, and I would really look forward to um, moving forward with him at the helm. I think he's a wonderful guy and he's going to have this idea and it's a good idea. So, and also it's going to be an opportunity for you and that opportunity will be more schooling. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that. Now, is there a nurse? Someone in the medical field in here, nurse, something, CNA, nurse, uh, caretaker, someone like that. Um, if, if there is, put it in the chat, please, or I can't see when you hit the um, heart button. So maybe just put it in the, um... yeah, Joe, you're, you're welcome. Uh, about the barn. I think we've got a big delay here, so I'm I'm not uh, I'm not getting your comments real quickly. I wish that didn't happen, but anyway, and it is 8:07. So if you all are getting tired, you just let me know. All right. So, um, so Lisa, anyway, I you've got really positive things coming your way. All right. Now, the nurse, CNA, if there's one not here, I don't know, there's medical, but it's not an illness, so I don't want you to think that. There's medical around you, definitely medical. Right, let me see. You're welcome, Lisa. Meg, okay, ex-nurse. Well, honey, I don't think you're ever an ex-nurse. I think you'll always be a nurse. And you're not doing that anymore, okay? Because you always kind of think in that nurse nurturing, and you are a support worker now. Meg, I think in the UK, isn't that someone who is um, more of a caretaker? You can you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you're you're making you're going to be making some changes, Meg, and um, I. They're positive they're positive, but you're going to be using your nursing skills. And that's what the great thing is about this. So that's why it came up. Um, I love the fact that you are a support worker. I think, I think I'm right on that, but correct me if I'm wrong, that um, uh, and I'm an MA. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, is that M-A or N-A? Okay. And there's also news for you too, and that is there is some continuing education for you, but I think you're going to be specializing and in going into a kind of a sideline in a different field, in a different way, all right? So 
I want you to kind of step back a minute because you're going to probably look at me and go, oh, Zelda, you're crazy. I, um, I don't believe this. Before Christmas, I think you're going to hear that you're going to have an opportunity come to you, but it's going to require you to maybe go in a slightly different direction than what you are right now. It's a great opportunity. Of course, there's always free will for everyone. I would take it, and it looks like it's really, really good for you. So I would take that, definitely. If I did not finish your question, Meg, my apologies, or my statement. The, the opportunity that you're going to have is really kind of parallel to the same thing but it's going to require you of doing something different okay and that opportunity is going to come to you after the first of the year so we have two of those two of those people there now so okay so they're they're in the medical field and i'm glad that you are in the medical field because both people that that you're suited for that very suited for that okay now we have a military person. Who's military? Former military, not now. Former. If that's you, please comment so I can see. And we're going to go on, OK? So. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm getting my pendulum ready. I don't know who that was, that basically had. Um, that the house came into. I I don't know. It's the light light beige house, the green, um, green walls when you walk in, like a light woodwork like this, and then. You walk in through the living room to the kitchen. There is a, that keeps coming through, that's why I'm mentioning it. There is a table by the window. If that's you, please comment, okay? All right, now, there is some, also someone in here who has lost something. It is valuable. I don't know if it's a set of rings. But if it's you, please comment. Let's try to find it. All right. This may be a little hard because we're trying to do this without me really seeing you. Uh, but I think I'm picking up on everybody's energy enough, good enough. Uh, we'll see here. There's pendulum. Okay. I'm going to move this so I can rest my elbow. And you can see this. Um and the camera this way, all right? Now, it is the opposite for you than it is for me. I'm gonna move it and try to move it up here like this. I want you to see my hand though. This is what's so difficult because I don't want you to think that I'm moving this thing because that's, it, it is get kind of difficult. Okay, so I think you can tell right now. I'm going to just let this go, <clears throat> pardon me. And it is resting right now. There's a lot of energy through this. And we'll ask Pendulum. <clears throat> I'm going to raise it so you can see the. Um, now, to my right, in clockwise, and that, what you're seeing right now is clockwise, it is backwards. Clockwise is yes, and then it is changing directions right now. My hand, I can't hold it that way. Hold on. Let me. Let me try to rest my hand. And I think you can see it here. Um, you don't have to see the end. Counterclockwise is no. And it is actually doing a counterclockwise right now. I will guarantee I'm not moving this. Okay? And I'm going to ask it to rest and go in this straight position. So someone, Pendy, I'm going to ask everything is falling asleep <laughs> sorry <laughs> so okay I'm gonna ask this maybe if I just hold it back like this okay all right so it's resting right now um, and you're gonna see that swinging 
okay? That is a rest for me. All right now, pendulum, I want you to, is there someone in this group that has lost a valuable object and he's doing it counterclockwise for me? And that answer is yes. Is now standing still. And it's waiting for me to ask a question. Pendulum, is this a valuable, is this, is this whatever item that they've lost, is this valuable? Is this valuable? Pendulum, can you tell me, is it valuable? Okay. The answer is yes. And it's resting a lot. Let me see if there's any comments here. Lisa, you, are you ex-military, my darling? Or did, are you, um, do you have something that's missing? If you are ex-military, hit the heart. I want her to hit the heart only. Okay, Lisa? So, or if you, if this is something that you have lost or misplaced, hit the like button. Hit the like button. So the blue like button is if it's something that you lost, or heart button if you are military, former military. All right. I don't know why I look behind me, because I always know there's nothing there. And I'm going to wait on Lisa. I know that there's a delay. And my pendulum is waiting too. <laughs> Do you see that? He's like, okay, we're waiting, we're waiting. Let's see. No. Oh, the house. The house. Okay, cool. All right, I'm sorry if I don't see it. Like I said, there's a little sort of kind of delay. Okay, the house. All right, pendulum, I'm putting you away just for a second. All right? The house. Lisa, I know that this is you. So since that house is coming through and you have a lot going on right now and you have some indecision and in fact, I almost feel like you're moving around, you're, you're restless, you're moving around furniture, you're moving things, you're cleaning, you're, you're trying to get answers because you know that this chapter that your family is in is, is coming to, it's not coming to an end like what we think. It's finishing, all right? You're about to take on a new beginning that new chapter, that new uh, area in life that I was just telling you about. And I, this is, this is great. And I think Lisa, when I talk to you like this, I think that there's a little connection there between you and I. I also, let me see if there's any more comments here. No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I also, for some reason, it also feels like there you had some type of an injury, not serious, but some type of injury that's bothering you. Um, if this is if this is all you know, put it in, put it in the comment. I just want you to know when these things come. Through, there's not really any big revelation. All it is is that you're on the right track. So when these things come through as a confirmation, me you describing your home and your family and what you're doing, you're you're finalizing this little chapter that you're in, and you're getting ready to proceed into another one. I feel your restlessness and the restlessness of your husband too. Okay, so I feel you're on the right track with your thinking. I do feel that there is a move. I don't know why I do feel that way. It just 
got. I feel like you're packing and moving and rearranging. You're, you're ready for some change. You and your husband both are ready for change. This opportunity will come to you, and it will come very, very quickly. And I want to say it's almost, it's going to come really close to Christmas where this opportunity may present itself. And then um, I just kind of feel like you're going to have some time to think about it, get the holidays over, and then you're going to make your decision. It is your decision. It is free will. And you're... Um, Think you're on the right track I, I think I know what decision you're going to make but I can't I can't guide you on that that's that's your that's your own decision to make so if that's true uh, that's that's wonderful to know okay who else who else it is almost 8 30 and I took up a lot of time telling these stories and everything I hope I got questions answered for all of you if I didn't answer your question, please put it in the chat right now. I'm going to try to get it to you or get it for you. Um, I um, want to make sure that, that everybody has their questions answered. So we'll see what we can come up with. I think the year 2020 is going to be a really good year for a lot of people. Um, I think this decade has been very tough, extremely tough for a lot of people, me included. Okay. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. There, Lisa. All right. I'm going to give her a little hug here. She's a good, I love Lisa. I love you all. Okay. So if there's anything more, uh, please put it in chat. If not, I think we're going to wind down. I keep, I, I, there's something that came in, and I'm going to have to figure out what that, but I think I understand exactly what that is. And um, we're going to wind down. Now, I do want to tell you there's a new comment. Let me look at that. Uh, Teresa, I love this. Oh, good. I'm glad that you did. I, I was a little worried. Can you finish the jewelry thing? I lost my jewelry in a move four years ago. Moan, it is you. Okay, yes, I can. Um, I was a little worried that everybody would get a little, like, bored or whatever. But I I just need to sit and talk to you like like my friends, like you are. Okay, hi, Dodie. Just wanted to ask earlier... Or medical field is that usually human or can it mean animal field too it can mean animal field too but what I was getting was more the human thing and I know you've got a question Dodie I'm gonna come back to you let's work on uh, oh Jennifer I love you thank you uh, Luann let's work on getting your jewelry in a move okay four years ago You, I, I wish I were real close that I could, I could like, I don't even know if I can bring you in with me. Um, so you could, so you could, but, well, let's try this. Okay. Okay, Luann, if you're asking me, if the jewelry is still with you, I think it's still there in, in your house. I don't think you lost it along the way. You lost all my jewelry in the move four years ago. I don't know why I think that it's still there somewhere with you, packed away. This may sound silly because I know you have looked everywhere. You have turned that, your house, upside down. But it is in an it is in a box still packed that you would have never thought, like tools, like there's some tools around it. That's what I'm seeing. If that makes sense, check and see if that because I think you had all your jewelry wrapped up. Was it stolen? I don't think so. I think you had all your jewelry wrapped up, and I think it you were like preoccupied. 
talking to someone. I think that you were in your kitchen talking to some something, something. You were there something with someone, preoccupied, in a hurry, stuck it in another box. And I think that it's got some jewelry in it with these tools. If you don't find it there, I'm not so sure you will find it, honestly. But I do feel it's with some tools. And I'm seeing I'm seeing a wrench. That's why I think. And it's not a big wrench. It's one of these small little household wrenches type thing. Okay? And my pendulum is giving me um, confirmation of all this. Let me check these new comments because I want to see if that's who Luann commented on this. Okay? Hold on. Uh, Peter, you're more than welcome. Can you tell us our investigation stuff will work out? Hold on. Yes, I missed you. Answer my question. Okay, no, I didn't I didn't get there yet. Jess, I love you. Thank you for coming in. I had to take a boat to Mexico and been hit up sir. He just messaged me. Well, you thank you very much for coming in. Okay. Okay. Leanna, hold on just a second. I'm going to get to you, Susan. I'm going to back up to Dodie. Dodie, um, I'm going to tell you something. You are about to embark after the first of the year with your animal field. You are about to change something. I want to say that you are going in service, and I don't know what really that means. You do, I think. Um, if it means service animals, then that's what I'm picking up for you, my dear Dodie. So I, that's what I'm getting, is service, service animals. Um, dis, for disabled, impaired, I think that is a real, oh, wait a minute here now, because I'm seeing some disabled animals along with it. I think, I think what you are going to be doing is almost pairing disabled animals with disabled people, if that makes sense. Look into that. It, let me know really what you think about that, okay? That is um, something I think it's been on your heart and mind for a long time. You have such a good heart in the, and such a good, wonderful an, animal lover. I think that it's something that you will flourish at. There's going to be an opportunity there for you and grab it. But I think that you're going to be heading heading something. You're the head of this movement is what it is. It's a movement. So Dodie, hang in there. I love that. I, if that's your idea, that's perfect for you. Okay, I need to go back through this. Jennifer, thank you, darling. And, okay, I'm going to get to you all. Yes, Anne, hold on. I think I, I'm, I'm getting to you. And I, I'm going to go to Anne first, okay? Anne Hawk, yes. Um, I think, Anne, what I was talking about is you um, are going to have an opportunity to make a change after the first of the year with your career. And I think that's why I'm seeing the medical. I think you're, I'm feeling that you're tired. And I don't want to say that you're bored, but you feel stagnant. And there's some changes that you want to make. And I think they're good changes. I think that you're you're trying to get along um, where you are right now, and it's just been really hard for you because you're not challenged. That's what it is. You're not challenged. You're very intelligent and in this field, and I think that you're very good at it. You're going to be making a change, and you're going to push for that for yourself very soon. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. Someone in this group is eating an apple because I can smell it. Hit the heart button if it's you. 
all right apple pie apple something there's an apple here dealing with an apple app something it is strong it's not I don't have any apples in my house so that come through but Anne um, you are going to be making a change where you're more challenged and if it requires some additional education for you you're definitely going to be doing that I know you want to retire uh, not soon but you're, but you're kind of gearing up for that and that's what you want to do so I think that that's that's where you're you're headed all right new comment let me see you're welcome I am retired okay and all right there is something um, you're welcome, Doni. All right, there's something, Anne, that you're going to be doing, that you're going to be going into. And like I said, you're feeling stagnant, and you're just kind of feeling not bored, but you just want something that you're ready to make a change. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be, I don't know if it's advisory work or something like that. You're going to make that, you're going to make a change happen. You're going to go forward doing something, helping others that is pretty awesome I think so I think that that's that's your message that you need to really look into maybe doing something where you're challenged you need a challenge um, okay I think that's it let me look down here and then I'm gonna go back back through can it be wax candle perfume future for <laughs> Lisa? No, I'm gonna tell you it is a it is pure apple. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm gonna go back. Let me go back. Okay, Susan asked if Mike was more than a friend. I think Mike is more than a friend, but Mike doesn't know that yet. Does that make sense? Mike um cares about you he's been burned in the past he doesn't want in his mind if he says it then he's committed and he can't he can't right now he's just having a hard time for that so this is what i'm going to tell you i like mike he's a good guy be patient with him and let him work through this all right he is more but if you just keep doing what you're doing right now, you can be with him. Mike has, like I said, he's got, he's got some past issues that he just doesn't want to, he doesn't, he's not able to say those words and commit. He just wants to be friendship right now, but you're the only one he thinks about. So if that helps you, I, th I think he's more than a friend, but Mike's got to admit that too. So if that helps you, Mike is a good guy. Just give him time. He'll be okay. He'll come around. Okay. Um, and you are welcome, darling. I love you because I'm going to tell you, I can see that you kind of, you're quiet you're an observer, and I, I wish I were that way sometimes. You're gonna really think of some things that you're you're gonna be really putting yourself in service to others more than you know that what you ever had thought about in retirement. So you're good. Okay. So, all right. Hold on. Let me back up and get these other questions here. Amber, you're welcome, Peter. And Peter, I want to encourage you because I think you get discouraged very easily because these things don't happen fast enough for you. And I want you to know that you're, you're very good at this whole thing, but you're, you are approaching it from a book-learned position and I think if you feel that you do something prescribed in a book or you meditate or, you know, whatever, and if it doesn't work that day, you get frustrated because it does not, it just doesn't seem like it's working. I want you to know that you, this is training 
this is training for your mind. This is training for your body. This is training for your, all of your senses. It's going to take time. This is a field that is just not, you know, you're not working at the local gas station one day and then you're, you know, an empath the next. You, it just takes time. And it's t study, work, it is work, it is hard work. And um, so with that being said, I want you to hang in there with it, though, because you are very good. All right. There's new comments. Hold on. Hi, Jess. Susan. Good. Yeah, you hang in there. I love Mike. He's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But if you chase him, if you start going up to him and confessing your love, he's going to bolt. Okay? So you just keep... You let him make the moves. He cares about you. You're the first thing that's on his mind. All right. Hi, Jess. Okay. Back up. Amber had a question, and that is, can you tell us if our investigation stuff will work out? Amber, my darling, I'm just going to tell you. The answer is yes. And I believe that it's because this is something that has been you, you and both Joe and Nick, Nick has been really wanting to do this for a long time, and you all fell into this at the right place at the right time. You're making moves that are really, really beneficial to you. And not that it's not beneficial to anyone else, but you have to do what's right for you. And that means that I believe you're going to be working on particular things like some you know a lot of people go out to different areas different haunts different asylums and houses and cemeteries and this and that and the other thing i think you're going to get to the point after doing all of that where you are going to say i think we need to specialize i think we need to do this i think and you're you're going to really be molding more for you than you're not going to let anybody dictate for you. You're going to be molding a lot of different areas that you're going to be interested in. You're, you're learning a lot, which is terrific. Okay? So the answer is yes. Easy does it. Can't push it. Don't worry about numbers. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Don't worry about nothing. Put the blinders on. Go for it. That's what you got to do. And if you have questions, research. And I know that you do research. That's great. So you're doing great. You guys are going to do very, very well in this. So there's room for everybody. Believe me, there is enough ghosts on this planet where you can all be that. <laughs> so there you go. So, all right. Now, Susan, we answered you. Amber? This is you, okay. Miss Jessica is back. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Jess. Okay, Leanna, I lost my dad two years ago and kind of lost myself since and feel stuck. That does make sense. Looking for guidance on how to move on to a new path and get into life again. Sorry, I don't know how to put it into words any better. Well, I'm going to tell you, I couldn't put it any words better than what you did. First of all, your dad is in an excellent place. He's in paradise, and he's not hurting anymore. He doesn't feel pain. He's feeling joy, and I want you to know you're going to see him again. You got stuck because you put all you, you put your, I don't know if you were a caregiver for him, but it's almost like you became lost when your dad left because it was like, oh my gosh, dad's gone and I don't have anything more to do. I want you to know that um, I'm getting hearts and thank you so much. I want you to know, Leanna, that I want you to give, to give you rest and I want to give you peace to know that it's okay because you're not stuck, you're mourning. And 
there's going to come a time here very, very soon that you're going to just wake up one day and you're going to go, wow, I have a job to do here on earth. And I'm going to take my dad's memory right along with me. And it's going to work out fine. And I'm going to get to see dad again someday. So until then, I'm going to live my life the best and the fullest and the happiest. And I'm going to help others. And if it's nothing else than giving another person a smile, then you will do that. You have such a good heart and you're such a good person. I just don't think that you should be too hard on yourself. I mean, I, I feel that there was a long time that it kind of took a lot of energy from you. I don't know if you took care of your dad. Let me look in the comments because I'm getting more comments here. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the right path. Um, <laughs> Jess, okay. You're welcome, Amber. Okay. All right. You really, Leanna, are on the right path. You, it's just taken you a little longer to work through this. And th there's no right or wrong when it comes to missing someone. Um, so, so take your time, but I also want to tell you, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't, there's not guilt there for your dad passing, but I do believe that you feel lost because it's kind of like you, you need something to do or you need. So my, my advice to you is go find something to do. Okay, get your mind on this. And I know you're busy. I know you are probably working and you've got family and everything else that you're dealing with right now. But I want you to do something special for you. So if that means take an art class, if that means do hair, do makeup, start a YouTube channel, make cookies for the neighbors, uh, buy sugar and the flour for all the widows in your area and give them to them and I, I mean you're you are your best barometer so you need to find something that sets everything aside that you can do where you take yourself from the morning okay and you don't get in a funk because I think that's where you kind of headed was you went from morning to funk and you, you're needing that direction. I'm going to tell you, and you know all, I'm, all a, I'm a Christian, all of you. I learned, and sometimes the hard way, in the book of James, it says that we are to pray for wisdom and understanding. And when I prayed for wisdom and understanding, I just thought, I'm going to hear the good. No, when you pray for when you pray for wisdom and understanding, you're going to hear the good, but you're going to hear the bad and the, and the ugly. So I want you to now start praying for wisdom and understanding. What's your direction? Where do you go? Where do you go from here? But I really think don't beat up on yourself on this, okay? Because your dad wouldn't want you to feel this way. You're, you're, and your dad's not worried about you. You know why I know this? Because your dad is in another dimension. And your dad knows that you can take care of yourself. You're a tough cookie in that direction. So let him be. Let him rest where he is and you are. Now it's time to start taking care of you. So like I said, even if you have to go get a new hairstyle, get your nails done, and start start a YouTube channel do whatever it is that you need to do but you need to put yourself into that interest get something that you're interested in again and that's definitely going to help you okay Diana so he's he's okay I don't want you to worry about him okay that so far so that's good um the apple smell is gone so I don't know. It could have been yours, Lisa. It could have been yours. But it is 8.43. And we had two participants that didn't get to show up tonight. So, And it's getting late, and we've been on here now, and we're just 15 minutes short of two hours. And I want all of you to know how much I appreciate this. It is a little experiment. It did go on a little longer than what I thought. But my storytelling took, what, 15, 20 minutes of it out of the way. 
So I want to thank all, I'm gonna wrap all this up now, and I wanna thank you all for coming and sharing this time with me. Um, dealing with this remote, um, I appreciate you so much. And I'm gonna go see what my cat is doing because he is at the door. I don't know if you can hear him, he's meowing a little bit. He wanted in here. Dodie, thank you so much. You guys are wonderful. I want you to know I have never been in such a great group, and I want to thank you all. Thank you so much, and I love you guys. And if you ever have any questions, or you need to know anything about haunts, paranormal, um, if I can't answer it, I'll find out. And if there is an answer, we'll find it out together, okay? So um, I got some comments here. I wanted to see if there's anything... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, good night to all. You're welcome, my darlings. Love you, sis, too, Dodie. Lisa, Leanna, Jess, Amber, Joe, Nick, Anne, Peter, um, all of those, Susan, uh, Jennifer, Mark, uh, all of you that have been, if I miss somebody, I'm sorry. I don't mean to miss you. But... I want to thank you again for everything. This has been really fun. Now, I also want to mention real quickly, I'm working on a docu-series for all of you, and it is about demons. And it's, there's not a demon around every corner, but I'm making it a docu-series so I don't get distracted from the comments, but that I can also insert pictures and um, some other information. So it's going to be a series because it will be long. And it's basically going to tell you where demons came from, uh, why they are here, what to look for in a demon, uh, not that we want them, but so you recognize them, how to handle that situation, how to get prayed up, how to protect yourself. There's a lot. And I think we're going to do some biblical stuff in there. So I just want you to know that... We're going to be researching. I'm going to be telling you a lot of things from the ancient manuscripts, from the Greek and the Hebrew and the Chaldee, which is Arabic. And we're go I'm going to be sharing a lot of things, everything that I know about these rascals. And if you're going to be going on haunts and ghost investigations and all kinds of things, you need to know these things. So... That, I'm going to be working on that. That's going to be coming up. Um, and I'll keep you posted. We do have some very cool announcements to start making after the first of the year. We're on collaborations and that sort of thing. Um, next week, I'm working on uh, start finalizing some things on a radio show that I'm going to be doing. So we are very busy, got a lot going on. And in between, I'm hoping to move from now until or well, before Christmas. So Lord willing, we can I can do that. So anyway, thank you again, everyone, for being here. I love you, and it's been great. I want to catch these comments real quick. Have a great night. Um, you are amazing. You guys are wonderful. You make up this group, and you're fantastic. So you take care. Love you. And have a good night. Thanks so God. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.